Hello everyone, Ryan here. Got a review for you today of the Hevono DC Bench Power Supply, the PS305 model. The guys over at Pavono sent this to me for a review. They have an Amazon store, and I'll link that down below in the, in the description. And uh, they have two models. They have the PS305, and then they have the PS305H, which includes another digit on the LED outputs here. Here are the specifications. This is a 0 to 30 volt power supply, 0 to 5 amps, and it operates at uh, 110 or 220 volts, so it's international. Let's pop the box open here. First of all, it comes with a standard IEC power cord, so they can drop in there whichever uh, cord is appropriate for your locale. So we've got our manual. Oops, there's our manual. It's just a single page. And I'll link this down below so you'll be able to find that. Okay. Here's the unit itself. Real small unit, nice size. Looks like it's uh, vented on the sides and it's got a fan. Here's the front of the unit. So we have analog adjustments, both fine and coarse voltage and fine and coarse current. And looks like it's got constant voltage and constant current modes. And we have a regular toggle switch to turn it on and off, a ground, an earth ground, which is nice, which means we can either let it float or we can connect the earth ground to the regular ground or the earth ground to the positive, depending on whether we're doing multiple power supplies for a positive negative uh, supply setup or what. And then uh, on the back, of course, we just have a, the fan output. We have the voltage selector for 110 or 220, make sure you set that to the right voltage for your area. And we have a regular IEC connector at the bottom. So that's the unit itself. It also comes with a short uh, lead with banana jacks on one end and alligator clips on the other. Uh, that would be helpful to beginners with a nice heavy gauge wire. All right, so let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Oops, there we go, power on. Looks like it lights up quick, and I like the fact that it has LED outputs rather than LCD with a backlight. Much easier to see that way. Looks like we've got two LEDs here to indicate constant voltage or constant current mode, and then we can adjust our settings. So let's turn up the current to a certain value. Go about halfway on that. Should be a maximum of 5 amps current, so we're probably at about 2.5 there. So let's, uh, let's increase our voltage, and as we see it goes right on up. And we can use the fine adjustment here to hone in on what we're looking for very carefully. So there's 12 volts exactly. And as you see, it indicates we're in voltage mode because the current limiting hasn't kicked in. So as we put this thing under load, if the current load exceeds the setting, it's going to limit the voltage to only allow the set current to flow through the unit and through the device connected to it. So let's hook up the multimeter and we'll just check out our accuracy here. Okay, so we have the unit set to 12 volts exactly. So let's probe the outputs and see what we get. Twelve point one4. Now that's pretty decent. let's uh, let's adjust this a little bit and go to different values. Let's go down to five volts, which is a common voltage used in uh, digital TTL logic. And pretty close. Not bad. 5 volts. Let's go up to 24 volts. It's nice to have the fine and coarse adjustment. We can hone in on the voltage we're after there. But it's still obviously a little bit off, but by a tenth. So there's 24 volts. See if we can get it right on. Yeah, a little bit of play there. So let's just click right after 23.9, and it should be more like 24 exactly. There we go. 24.08. Not bad. Sounds good. And then let's see how high this will go as far as voltage output. When I turn it all the way up, I can actually hear the fan spin up a little bit. So 31.7 is our maximum voltage output. And then 
and see how low it will go. Oh, nice. It actually goes to zero. Some of these power supplies don't go quite to zero. They'll go to maybe 1.7 or 2 volts based on the, the switching technology or, or the conversion technology that's being used. But this one actually does drop all the way to zero. So we can even turn it up here. Let's see the smallest number we can get. We're at a tenth of a volt on the multimeter. We haven't clicked over to a tenth yet on the display. It does look like we're actually able to adjust it through one tenth of a volt and and below, even though we're not seeing an output on the, the display here. If you need something that tiny, you could use your multimeter to adjust it. There we go. A little bit inaccurate at the extreme low range, but not bad. Half a volt. There we go. Not bad. Okay, let's test it under load. I'll shut it off and back in these leads. I have a resistor here. It's just a 20 watt ceramic. Ooh, it's cracked. Just a 20 watt ceramic 3.3 ohm resistor. And I don't know how good this is going to be, but as you see there, it's got a nice little crack in it. So we don't, I don't know how accurate it's going to be, but let's check it first and see what the resistance is. So it is right at four ohms. So going down there. So it's it's close to its rated resistance. Uh, so all right, let's put it on here. This is going to get pretty hot. So let's see what we get. Turn it on. And first of all, let's just check out the constant current mode. So I'm going to just turn the current mode, the current knob, all the way to zero. And I'm going to increase the voltage up. Notice the voltage doesn't change because we're limiting the current to zero. So let's increase the current until we have a half amp. There we go. We'll use our fine adjustment to get half an amp of current flowing through this resistor. And as you see, we're outputting 1.6 volts. So let's check the output and just see if the voltage is accurate. I'll just drop those in there. And we have 1.656 volts. I'm going to turn the unit off and then back on and we'll see how accurately it resumes where it left off. And there we are, right back where we left off. Okay, now let's go ahead and increase the current up to one amp. As we do that, we hear the fan kick in a little bit more. One amp of current at 3.3 volts. So again, let's push it on up. Go up to two amps. And the voltage readout is very close. Let's go to three amps. My resistor is going to be getting really hot about now. And we have 10.3. And shut that off and check the current accuracy. I'm cutting everything back to zero. Okay, so we'll go over into current mode. And we'll connect this in current mode. I have these little alligator clips that I like to press on the end of my Multimeter leads, I'll just click that on. And now we should be able to check the current accuracy. Okay, so here goes, we have everything set to zero, volts and current. We should be getting zero at this point. Well, we've got eight tenths of a volt there. Okay, so let's go ahead and increase that. So 0 0.25, 0 0.241, pretty close. We'll go ahead and turn up the voltage setting to somewhere in the middle. Raise the current until we have exactly one amp. And 
Yeah, it's pretty close. 0.98. Let's move that over so we don't burn anything. All right, let's go up to two amps. And then you may hear the fan kicking in there. And we're pretty much bang on there. Now let's go on up to three. We're at 10 volts, three amps, 2.98, pretty close. We'll go to four just to see how the unit holds up. And it is sourcing four amps at no problem. And then all the way up to five amps, and that's still no problem for the unit. Let's go ahead and shut it off before our resistor catches fire. So current looks good too. So the accuracy does seem to be within the limits set by the specifications. We're given a display accuracy of plus or minus half a percent and plus or minus one digit. And these readings do seem to fall within that range. All right, let's take this unit apart and see what makes it tick. And we know this is a switched mode power supply. So what we're going to see inside is a large MOSFET and diode, as well as a large inductor. We're going to be rectifying AC to DC and then with the boost buck converter, we're going to be converting to whatever DC voltage we want on the output. We're going to see the MOSFET and diode are here on, on the top on this heat sink. And then over here is a small transformer and next to the transformer we have our large inductor which is part of the boost buck converter. The fan pulls air across the heat sinks. It keeps the diode and MOSFET cool. And then here's the AC to DC section. And our power switch is actually not, it's a live power switch, it's not a soft switch. So when you turn off the switch, you actually interrupt current into the unit, which is nice. We see we've got a couple of trimmer pots down here, which we can use to, I assume, adjust the current and voltage outputs. And then we have our ribbon cable to the front of the unit, and it's glued in there, as you see. We've also got a couple of trimmer pots on the front, which I'm assuming can be used to adjust the output display. On the back of the unit, we see that there are some nice heavy traces for the high current section of the output all the way going over there. And then we see the AC section with some decent isolation between the other sections. That's a good practice. And then over here, we see a sig uh, some small low current signal traces. Let's take a look at the front panel. On the front panel, we see the black box that does the current and voltage output displays. Now we look at the capacitors and see that they're using a Ching brand. I don't know anything about that brand. As you see there, they're used basically throughout the unit. And then you'll notice that there's no fuse. Even though the one page manual states that there is a fuse, I have not been able to find one. If you see one, let me know where it is. But as you can see here, there doesn't appear to be a fuse in here. Let's talk about overshoot, but first let's set up the unit so that it's easier to measure the outputs with the oscilloscope. This unit is a floating output power supply, so measuring the difference in voltage between the earth ground and the negative or earth ground and positive yields about a 40 volt AC signal. This is a stray parasitic voltage and it's caused by the internal capacitances of the unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to short the earth ground to the negative terminal with this piece of wire and that should eliminate this uh, stray voltage and allow us to take cleaner readings with our oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is also referenced to earth ground, so this will allow us to connect the oscilloscope ground clip directly to either the negative or the earth ground terminal for the cleanest signal possible. Let's connect the scope, the ground clip to the minus terminal, the probe tip to the plus terminal, and we'll set the probe to 1x. Now we'll power on the unit, with the scope set in single shot mode and capture that rising edge. So we see that the signal rises to about 26 volts before it levels back off at, a, at the voltage we've set the power supply to, which is around 24.8. According to the specifications, we're allowed 3.45% overshoot. That would come to 25.66 volts maximum with a set point voltage of 24.8 volts. It does look like we're very close to the allowable overshoot on this one. So I'm going to say this is within range. Let's rerun the test at 12 volts. Now at 12 volts, we should have no more than 0.4 volts overshoot. But we notice here that we get 14.28 volts as the maximum peak there before it levels back out at the selected voltage. So in this case, I'm going to call this a fail. Here's a test at five volts. The allowable 
overshoot would be 170 millivolts, but we get an overshoot up to 7.4 volts before it stabilizes back down at five. So another fail. Let's do a couple tests under load. I've got some resistors here that I've put together in parallel, and the total resistance is around eight ohms. So let's connect that into our circuit, and then we'll get a five volt reading. And to me, it looks like the five volt reading doesn't have any overshoot. That looks great. Now let's go ahead and get a 10 volt reading. And we do have some overshoot there. It overshoots all the way to 11.86 volts when we should only be overshooting to around 10.3. So a little bit out of spec there as well. So I'm going to say that the overshoot of this unit does not meet the specifications. If you're working with sensitive electronics, be careful when connecting this unit and powering it up while connected to your circuit, because if the overshoot exceeds the allowable maximum voltage of your circuit, you may experience some damage. For such circuits, it might be wise to add your own switch in series with the circuit rather than depending on the power switch of the power supply. Let's take a look at the thermal characteristics of the device. I'm going to set up a thermal camera and take the unit from 0 to 5 amps. Here's a photo of the board. And now let's switch over to the thermal view as we take it up to 5 amps. And this is a speed enhanced version. It's going up right now to 5 amps. You see there's one item there, one component that continuously gets hotter than everything else. It's a tiny diode. I'm not sure why it gets so hot, but it never seems to pass 235 or so. And here's a picture of my power resistor. Notice it got up to 626, which I think is the maximum my camera can detect. So it got pretty hot. One of the downsides of a switch mode power supply in contrast to a linear power supply is the noise that's introduced on the output. This is due to the switching components. As you see here, there is some noise introduced by this supply, and it looks like it's about one volt peak to peak at a low voltage output. The frequency of this noise at about six volts is about 160 kilohertz. You'll notice that as the output voltage is adjusted through the range, the amplitude of the noise stays basically the same. It doesn't appear to be a huge amount of noise, so this shouldn't be a problem for regular applications unless you have a very sensitive device connected to this unit. So to conclude, this is a nice little power supply. It comes at a reasonable price. Here's the Amazon listing. It's $56.99, and that would include free shipping if you're a Prime member. This unit does compare to other units of the same specifications, uh, same approximate price. Uh, and I would say that this unit would provide a decent service for beginning electronics enthusiasts. Be careful of the overshoot, but otherwise it does seem to be a solid unit, seems to be meeting the specifications. So I hope that's helpful to you. Leave your questions and comments below. If you like this video, leave us a great big thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Check out componentfun.com for more. And thanks for watching.